Um, this video is just going to be a quick run through of the uh, the incremental number in solution. And um, there's been a few questions um, on on the blog, um, just regarding the um, the number side of things isn't being appended to the prefix um, and, a, and a few issues like that. So I just thought it may help just to kind of go through the solution um, um, just kind of visually. Um, and I have actually updated the original post to just kind of include a little bit more clarity. So I hope that helps as well. But obviously following this, if you've still got questions, please, I encourage you to put uh, put the questions on my blog and I'll do my best to help. So um, just a quick intro in terms of what this solution actually is. So this is a solution that basically generates an auto, auto number um, uh, without any plugins or any code. It's essentially done by, by two real-time workflows. So you can only really implement, implement this in uh, CRM 2013 and, and beyond. Um, and you can actually kind of put prefixes and, and things like that and you can do this for loads of different types of things um, so I've implemented this for about eight or nine different types um, the one I'm just I've, I've basically just kind of bundled together at the moment just to kind of show you in this video has got two types um, but basically the more types kind of the more kind of monotonous kind of uh, kind of repeating of the same thing so it's not like you're losing any of the um, any of the kind of awesome goodness inside it just means you have to repeat that the amount of types that you actually include in your solution which isn't so bad you know and um, you're getting around kind of um, having to code something um, and actually implement it using using the awesome functionality that CRM has so um, so what I'll do is I'll actually just show you it working so I've implemented this actually on the out-of-the-box um, account field um, uh, the account number so um, the whole thing with this is it can be implemented anywhere it can be implemented on any of the um, the normal out of the box entities and it can be um, on any custom entity as well you've not got any restriction with that so let's just test account one type one and that's just generated there and So you can see that that was previously three four five. It's now three four six. So, um, so yeah. So uh, basically, that's it. That's it. In, that's it working. Um, just a few kind of um things I'll just say just before I kind of go into the solution is that I I did notice um kind of revisiting this that the it, it was all kind of done using decimal numbers when you can actually just use whole numbers. I'll get rid of the whole kind of decimal element of it. Um, maybe I was on a little bit of a decimal frenzy when I wrote wrote it originally. Um, uh, the original post. So. Um, <laughs> maybe, but you, you can just use whole numbers if, if you don't want that. So I'm, I'm just going to show you um, show you the solution. And before I do, I've just actually mocked something up in Visio. So actually, it'll probably be better. So um, essentially, what what this solution is 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 it's just two real time workflows that basically um, are kind of in basically in this in the same transaction, if that makes sense. So you've got your kickoff trigger. Um, so that's for me, it's on the creation of an account. Um, and on that creation, what it does is it creates a an auto number request, um, and it has that specific type that I've selected on there. So there is a little bit of defensive code in it you'll need to well, workflow in <laughs> that you'll need to do um, just to make sure that that's included. Um, so essentially, it creates that auto number request. But actually, there's um, there's actually an, the second workflow then that's actually based on the creation of an auto number request. Um, that then updates your auto number definition which kind of holds all your static values um, and then it updates that auto number request in the same transaction um, and then essentially then kind of going back to your first workflow um, it, you then just basically update the uh, wherever your, your number uh, record is uh, your number field is so that was the account in my case um, it basically updates it once with the prefix and then the important thing is it, it appends the number to then that field um, so this is my first process. I'm just going to deactivate so I can actually show you a little bit more. So 
So in terms of kind of the when this initiates, it doesn't have to be on the create. It can be on anything. It can be on the update of a field. That is that's up to you and the business requirement that you've got to build this for. Um, and that's the kind of awesome thing in terms of the flexibility. So um, so you can see here that this is the auto number request being made. You're basically going, oh hey, you know, I kind of want to, I kind of want a number. Can you please give me a number? Um, and this is kind of this is what I said about in terms of the the repetition. I've got two. Um, in terms of kind of you know you can expand that as much as you want and I'm sure there's loads of magical things you can do with this as a base um, to make it even better and to improve it um, but generally speaking you know it, it, you're not losing anything it's, it's still the same even if you just did it for one and you would never even had a prefix it doesn't matter you're still kind of using the same same process and you're just not not putting that prefix there so you see there that that um, that gets created and when that gets created, you're basically setting just some initial things. You're setting a name, you're setting this lookup, which is very important, and you're setting the, what prefix is required. And this is based on your global option set. So if you do use your prefixes, definitely recommend just using a global option set. It makes everything so much simpler. Um, and then just nipping back to, um, <laughs> to the entity by the looks of it to the second workflow. So this is kind of the workflow that kind of does uh, a lot of the heavy lifting, to be honest. It kind of does <laughs> all the work, um, apart from just depending. The other one's just kind of saying, hey, I want one. And, and this is the, the actual kind of um, the worker <laughs> as such. Um, so again, you can see it's a real-time workflow. It's, it's um, based on when, when a, an auto number request um, is created. Um, and to be honest, this is where, um, this is one of the places where things can go wrong which is why I'm trying to explain kind of the entire process of it and just kind of walk through it in a little bit more depth than, than the original blog post actually did. So um, you can see there again, it's split into dependent on your type. So it's not just the repetition in the first workflow. There's, there's the, the same amount of repetition in this workflow as well. So not that you're being punished for the amount of types <laughs> you're actually using. Um, it's, just, it's just one of those things when, you, when you, you've got different conditions. So um, you can see here, so the first step, basically, you've, you've got the condition of if it's a certain type. So on the create, it's basically going, OK, what type do you actually want? So essentially, that worker's going, so it can put it in the, in the right pot. Um, and it, the first thing it actually does is it updates the auto number definition. And it does this because it needs to increment the numbers. So you can see there here that it's basically saying increment by. And what you're actually using is you're, in, you're using this number here um, to increment whatever value is here. So before you actually start kind of building all this, you obviously need to, when you make your entities, you need to then go and create an auto number definition record with your numbers in it. So then it, it, that's, that's essentially what it's going to be using. And then the second thing it does, it then updates the actual auto number request itself. So um, it's basically kind of says, OK, so you, I've got your request. I'm going to go increment these, the, the number that you need for the, the, the type that you need. Then I'm going to ping back the information that you actually want based on that. So and there it is. So you can see there that the new number, that new number requested that auto definition, because that um, that um, uh, the the auto number request um, basically just wants one number, regardless of any type. It can only ever be one type or this solution anyway. Um, so there's only going to be one number that you're interested in, and this is this number which you've just incremented from the auto number definition. And then you've got the prefix that you want that you can just go grab from the auto number definition as well. That's basically where they retrieve from. And then, then that's it. Then, then essentially, then it drops out of of this the the worker. Essentially, what happens in in the actual kind of transaction is then what happens in it kind of nips back to this your original workflow that that initiated this whole thing and goes, okay, now update your record. So in my case, this is the account. And you can see the first thing is prefix and it's and it's update the prefix. So basically set to, that will be set to. And then it's a second um second update um on the um on the account number. And I don't know why it's um don't know why it's saying that um it's uh set to because it's not. So it's this here, it's append with. So you've got to make sure that you, you don't just do this. So what I'm doing now, so um, go down to there um, and which one was it? It was new number. Because you will then see that this, this that it, it must have the append with. If it doesn't have it, just slow again and, and do it. And sometimes it's a little bit of a pain. Um, 
And one of the things that I'm just going to mention also is is what I just did there that some of you may not be may not be familiar with is this whole local values thing. So this is the whole thing about kind of the the whole kind of transactional process. So um, the whole thing is that essentially you're you're basically saying I I want a, the value that. <laughs> It's local, pretty simply. Um, it, it goes back to that whole kind of transactional thing, the whole thing that, that in terms of what I'm trying to kind of get across in the video um, and try, try to kind of help you understand how it works because I think we would actually be able to... Um, it helps when, when, you, when you build it in terms of where it's getting this information from um, and then you can troubleshoot so much better. So um, you can see that that's there. Um, and then the thing is, is also as well is to just be careful of is the more different types you've got, the more local values you've, you've actually potentially got. So that's just something to be careful of. So um, what I mean is, let me just delete this um, and let's just pretend we're appending. Can you see here now there's two and because I'm on the different different types. So um, it's always uh, as you kind of go down, it's always that one. So for that would be for type two. So, um, so yeah, so I, I hope that helps kind of the explanation, um, kind of the, the tricky parts, um, the tricky parts where I think there, there may be issues is that a whole append with, so where you're appending that new number, um, and also on this, on your second, um, on your second uh, workflow is there may be what you may not be doing is on this going back to the auto number request, you, perhaps you aren't updating the new number and the prefix. So, um, because even if you're grabbing these on your other workflow, if these aren't set, then it can't set it to anything. So, so yeah. So I hope that helps. Um, I'm going to update the the actual original blog blog post, like I said, to just kind of have more clarity. Um, and and I'll include the uh, video diagram as well. So, um, so if anyone has any questions, then uh, just just put put them on a, on the post, and I'll, I'll respond. Thank you.